All right, so what prophecies have you been given? What has somebody said about you in 2016? Today we're talking about a subject that uh, some people may find rather very controversial. It's one that we don't talk about as even as Christians. You don't want to be too loud on it. Otherwise, people begin to see you some way if you begin to question some of the things that people are saying. But we're touching on prophecies is a big subject. It's definitely a part of us. And we want to spend some time on it. I've got a perfect guest for us to discuss this issue. But let me remind you that since this subject is about all of us, I would love that you get interactive with me on the subject. You can hit me on WhatsApp, which is 0560800000, or you can go to Facebook, look for Joy News, and then you can write on our wall. My guest is Prophet Eric Hehamaku, who is head pastor ICGC, Open Heavens Temple in Ajiregano. And we're talking prophecies with him. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I am well. I'm blessed. Good to see it's you It's good again. to have you. Yeah. I haven't been given any prophecy, perhaps because I haven't been to church in a while. Oh, uh, I see. You were not in church on the 31st night? <laughs> no, I wasn't. You were working? No, I wasn't. I wasn't working. Wow. Um, I stayed by my radio okay. and did my own crossover okay. at home. Okay. Okay. But we know that people have been given different kind of prophecies. Yeah. Let me start by asking... What's the difference between revelation and prophecy? Um, um, every prophet has two predominant gifts. One of the gifts is the utterance gifts, which is speaking forth, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Mm. Then he has what we call the revelatory gift, that is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, or discerning of spirits. So um, uh, prophecy is speaking the mind of God, but revelation can come through word of knowledge or word of wisdom, come through dreams, mm -hmm. vision, trances, and all that. But that has to do with more revelatory gifts. So there are two different things, but mostly, most prophets experience revelation in their day-to-day -day administ administration of the gift. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that's what, what, what it means. Mm -hmm. yeah. But must somebody prophesy can you pros prophesy on your own no the bible says that the spirit of god moved his servants to speak the word of god so but in the last probably in the last 20 30 years in this country we have had a restoration of the prophetic office which is the prophetic gift which is one of the fivefold ministries of the church because the fivefold ministries of the church in Ephesians chapter um, uh, 4 verse 11 to 12, uh, he gives some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Mm. So these fivefold had been in the body of Christ for a long time. But I think in recent times, the office of the prophet has been activated in dispensations. Mm. And normally the, the office of the prophet is one of the gifts. So it has no, it's one of the gifts, like an apostle or an evangelist or okay. a pastor or a teacher. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there bad prophecies and good prophecies? I believe that prophecy always speaks the mind of God. And uh, prophecies come to direct people. Uh, they can be forth telling, which has to do with something that is just quite recent and forth telling. In the Old Testament, most prophets spoke more on forth telling. And most of them were prophesying about the coming of Christ, mm -hmm. the Messiah. Now, foretelling has to do more in the New Testament, which has to do with some directive prophecy in the now. Okay. But within it, God can direct you and caution you. But the purpose of prophecy is to bring people back to God. God is not interested in destroying anybody's life. So when you receive a bad prophecy or a warning, like in the days of Jonah, the reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh was that he didn't want the people to be saved. But he knows that when he goes to prophesy that God is going to destroy the land, they will repent. Mm -hmm. So God's major focus is that nobody should go wrong. So when you go wrong and the word of God comes to you, it comes to correct you. So okay. when you receive the prophecy, you must be able to help you to direct your life mm -hmm. and pray according to what God is saying. Okay, so the prophecy comes... Uh, for you to change, change, if you like. Yes. For you to be on the right path, for yes. you to be saved. Saved. Because God does not want anybody to go to hell anyway. That's why he sent his son to die. So prophecy, unless otherwise, you come to what we call a reprobate mind, where God gives up on you. But God 
always makes that's what the Bible said that if my people are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray I the Lord I'll heal the land mm. so there's always a bat so prophecies are not supposed to put here in people God prophecies for edification for exhortation and comfort so if 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 I if I go to church mm -hmm. during a prayer session and mm -hmm. I'm called to come to the front mm -hmm. and the prophet tells me that I see your in-laws tying your womb. <laughs> they have something, yeah. they've gone to put it somewhere yeah, no, right. and that kind of thing. What, what is that? You see, um, I think that there must be decorum in the administration of the gift. I think that um, we're having challenges because there's no decorum. And uh, you see, uh, you don't go singling out people. Everybody knows that the devil doesn't like a believer. So I, some of these things are very sensitive, and I think that it has made the church become a place where we have difficulty because people leave that service and either go and attack their in-laws, mm -hmm. either go and fight. But the question is that, is that what God wanted to do? But you know, this is a personal experience. Yes, yes. Whoa. Yes. Oh my God. But what I didn't know, and I, I haven't you. said it openly, uh, openly like I'm doing right mm -hmm. now. Yesterday mm -hmm. I said, Okay, I don't know. Maybe God wants me to reveal so that somebody else could learn something yes. from it. So what, what should be done is that... What did I pray? didn't know, I was pregnant by the time that that prophecy was being given. Okay. Meanwhile, they said that... Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it, it kind of like... You kind of doubt some of the people that yeah. you meet along the way. Yeah. And you're yeah. not so sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's decorum. Because, you see, it's not everything that God shows you as a prophet that you should say it in public. Because it's not the purpose to do that. God may show you that, but you just go pray about your marriage, pray about your childbearing. I pray with you that God will give you a child. That's okay. Mm. But to start mentioning names and all that, because you could anyway go and attack your mm -hmm. in-laws and, and sometimes those things are, and some, I think that we have a very strong African um, uh, background, which is now creeping into the church where Unfortunately, people want to look at it as how people go to the fetish. That's where the conflict is. So I think that mostly as genuine prophets of God, your purpose is to bring the people to God, point the people to Jesus, and at the end of the day, don't destroy homes and marriages. Big question, Prophet Hamaku. Uh, how do you differentiate between bad prophecy and a good one? They have about seven... Um, um, things you should look for. Number one, does that go to the, with the word, the written word of God, the Logos? So anytime you receive a prophecy, you judge a prophecy by the word of God. Number two, does that prophecy assault Jesus? Or assault the man? Mm, the so man who is giving you that yeah. prophecy. Number three, there must be an inner witness. As you are receiving the prophecy, the Bible said the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. So there must be an inner witness. Number three, you see the fulfillment of the word. Number four, there's a test of agape. Is God's love showing in the prophecy? That's what I'm even saying, that if the person had even sinned, you still see the love of God, that if you shall repent, I'll visit you. Mm. Then number six, Confirmation, one or two. That's why you don't take very, very strategic decisions just by one word. About marriage, about business, about career. They'll be confident. Also, the last one is the conduct of the prophet. So you don't just receive a word. So there must be benchmarks, but the ultimate is the word of God. So every prophet must be ready that his word will be, will be judged by the word of God. Mm. You understand? Like what you said you received. Is it in line with the word of God? The word of God says that we shouldn't should love our enemies, but you go and fight your enemy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So it must be judged. He might be saying the thing. So the word of God is a standard. And because the word of God, which is the Logos, which is the Bible, which was inspired by God, is the highest form of prophecy. Because we have four levels of prophecy. The first level is the written word of God. The second one is somebody who operates in the office of the prophet. And personally, with research and reading, I believe that it takes 
close to 15 years for somebody to walk into the office of the prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have the gift of the prophet. Mostly anybody who spends time with God in prayer, and mostly it should be on intercessors. Because I, I didn't even know what I mean. People call, I'm, I'm a pastor actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up in the prayer department. I grew up as an intercessor. And you know, as I continued to pray, I began to speak to people's life and it, it started coming to pass. I meet people now and they tell me, Pastor, you met me 20 years ago, you met me 18 years ago, you said that and that to me, I forget entirely, but it's coming to pass. Mm -hmm. So we have the resident gift of the prophet, that is inside. Then we have the spirit of prophecy in services where the power of God is so strong, the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Christ. So when you go to church and you see the, the presence of God, it's the spirit of prophecy. And when they say prophecy, it's not necessarily saying that that's here is the Lord. Because Sunday after Sunday, our pastors preach the word which is the ultimate prophecy. Mm. So the ultimate prophecy is the word. Now, prophets operate, like I said, by utterance gifts and by revelatory gifts. And the word of wisdom has to do with direction. Now, the word of knowledge is past knowledge. So when somebody know, doesn't know you from anywhere, calls you on the first name, calls your date of birth. That is very good, but it's just trying to identify that God knows your name and knows who you are. But after telling you that the next thing a person is supposed to do is what is God saying? But is that always coming from God if you tell me my name and the a fact, little detail? Is the, it fact God? Of the, fa the fact of the matter is that familiar spirits can also reveal people's names. Mm. That is why people must be careful where they go to church. Because there are prophets out there who are contacting, so I can't say prophets out there, there are people out there who are using familiar spirits. That is why when you go to church services, one of the clear things you can notice is, is the word of God being preached. Does it bear witness with you? Because you don't need anybody to tell you this is the presence of God. And that's why believers or Christians must grow themselves, not by just listening to prophecy, by the word of God. What does the word of God say? Mm. And the challenge we have today is that we have a lot of believers who don't want to read, who don't want to study, who don't want to know God for themselves. So they go to people like that say, pray for me. I tell my church members that I will teach you how to pray. I will pray with you. I will not pray for you. I pray for you as a pastor. Even in the Bible, Paul always said, pray for us rather. But it is the other way around. So you teach people. Then... When they know the Holy Spirit, when they have a, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, because for me, when I'm in a service and somebody's giving a wrong prophecy, I can just feel it that this is not right. Yeah? You can just feel it. And the, it's not because I'm a special person, because the word does not bear witness with your spirit, mm. and which every believer must have. But, but not maybe with, you, you've gone very far in the, fine, in the word, so you can, you can feel it <laughs> yes. in the spirit. But the Bible also says we shouldn't despise prophecies. So maybe you note it down. Mm. And after you note it down, there's what to do. Why do I feel, I get the sense that women get a lot of these prophecies than men? I think that uh, in the average church attendance... <laughs> the women are more. <laughs> the women are more. Okay. So in average church attendance, it's very few churches that you find that, that the men out, outnumber mm. the women, but most often... Uh, um, uh, women find themselves in church more and women are more open to church and dynamics than men. Men okay. are very logical but women are very emotional like um, the psychologists say. Mm. So you find out a lot of women do that and sometimes I think the, the, the women also are vulnerable sometimes, yeah. Mm. So how do we deal with the various prophecies that we've received in 2016? I, I'm, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 says that this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies made concern you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. One of the things people must know is that when you receive a prophecy, it is not the end. I made this, uh, there's a comment, of, there's a statement I've made that between that year's the Lord, it came to pass. Is warfare, diligence, and character. So when you receive a prophecy, it's a word spoken into the future. You must begin to pray about it. Diligence means you must begin to work with it. Mm. You don't receive a prophecy that you get a good job and you sit in the house and pray and not go, up for, and not go on, on the net and go on the papers to apply. Then when you get to the job, to, you must work hard. You work hard. I'm sure you got here by 4 a.m. probably. So, but you don't receive prophecy and expect 
it to happen. And the mistake people do is that they receive prophecy upon prophecy and think that it will happen. But every prophecy must be processed. That's why I wrote a book on processing mm. your personal prophecy. Okay. Because that book teaches you how to receive prophecy, how to judge prophecy, and how to manage prophecy. Mm. So there are people who have received prophecy and the prophecy is hanging over them, their heads. Because any time you receive prophecy, as the prophecy is coming out, one of the things you are going to be confronted with is demonic forces. Like in Daniel chapter 10, there was a prophecy that Israel will come out of captivity at a particular year. Daniel said he understood by the books in Daniel chapter 9. And the Bible says that he began to pray. And the prince of Persia withstood him for 21 days. So if he had stopped praying the first day, like the results would not come. But he continued praying till he broke through. So when you receive prophecy, entities also war with you. So you must be able to war with that prophecy for it to come to pass. Jacob had an encounter with the Lord when he was coming back from his uncle's place. The Bible says he was left alone and an angel wrestled with him. And as he was wrestling with the angel, he said that, bless me, unless you bless me, I will not let you go. He said, what is your name? You must be able to wrestle with God. When you receive a word, you must go back to God. Because it was God who told him, go back to your father's house and I'll be with you. And here comes Jacob. As he was coming, he noticed his brother was coming to meet him with 400 men. So he had to walk. He had to pray. So when you receive prophecy, it does not mean you just go and sleep. Mm. The third example is when I, uh, Elijah said, I, I hear the sound of abundance of rain in 1 Kings chapter 18, 41. And he told Ahab the run. But the Bible says he went on Mount Carmel and he bowed and prayed. So when you receive prophecy, it's a sound of abundance of rain, but it has not manifested yet. So you must be able to go to, into prayer, mm. to travel. Isaiah 66 said that as soon as Zion travelled, Zion gave birth. So prophecy is just a pointer to where God wants to take you. But you need warfare, you need diligence, you need to build character for it. Otherwise, you will not receive the prophecy. The Bible says in Psalm 105 that after the word of God had tried Joseph, he was released. So when you receive a word, and many a times, mother, you receive a word and everything will go contrary to the word. Mm. Like in the case of Joseph, he had dreams, he was going to be a big guy, but all of a sudden, there he was in the pit. Mm. There he was in Potiphar's house. There he was in prison. But the word of God will try you, and when you pass, you receive it. Mm. Does the prophecy always wait for you? So say you don't pray, uh -huh. you don't, you're not diligent. You're not here receive it. That's but simple. would it wait for you anytime you decide to do there the are seasons. You... There are seasons that God wants things to be achieved in your life. That's why sometimes uh, we believe that God has an ability also to cause a restoration of the seasons you have missed. But mm. that is the, it's an ambit of God. So when you receive a prophecy and you don't deal with it with the timings, maybe you might lose it, it might, it might not manifest. However, God also, is, the sovereignty of God cannot be overruled. God can decide to do, like in the case of, um, of Joseph, you realize that because of the challenges he went through, his father, Jacob, laid hands on Ephraim and Manasseh and made a decree. An amazing thing is that because of what Joseph went through, Ephraim and Manasseh had inheritance with their uncles, Reuben, Judah, and others, because, because his father felt that Joseph was not treated well, by, and by his prophetic anointing, he laid hands on them, and she, number one, he changed their positions, and number two, he moved them 40 years ahead of their time. Mm. So sometimes God can transit you faster, which we, sometimes we say divine speed, where what you are supposed to have enjoyed, maybe some years back you didn't enjoy, but God can just transit you within a short time for you to get all that mm. in one year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me read some messages coming through on WhatsApp. Some prophets can only see one thing. <laughs> Death of presidents and top politicians. Lord have mercy at Joy AM. Uh, kindly include your name when you send me a mm. message. This one says, good morning, prophets. Please, I'd like to know if any punishment goes with false prophecy. Wow. Since a lot of people prophesy, uh, prophesy, uh, prophecies now for monetary gains. So the prophesy now for monetary gains is from Nelson in mm. Koforidua. 
false I, prophets as I, they come I, with some punishments. Yeah, I believe that is God who deals with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a man to deal with them. So God knows how to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes you'd realize uh, that maybe they are, they are still enjoying good things. They are still living. They are still doing the, the, it. Yeah, the, the question is that the, the judgment comes from God. So the one um, uh, in the long run, mm. uh, uh, the Bible says that when the judgment day comes, he said, ah, you prophesied my name, you preach in my name, I don't know you. So, mm. This is from Musa Haruna. He says, Pastor, do you believe that a pastor or bishop can change into a different form in order to serve someone's life spiritually? I heard some prophet of God in some of our churches can <laughs> appear in a different form to, uh, to save people's life. I haven't heard this one. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> this one. I don't think. Maybe I cannot change myself. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, this message reads, Mavi, please, there are a lot of false prophets out there causing fear and panic in innocent people's lives who need to be arrested and prosecuted as well. Uh, could you believe that uh, so-called prophet told my friend to get ready to bury his father any moment from now, that my friend's father is going to die shortly. He also told my friend to put 5,000 Ghana CDs uh, aside for the funeral, and since then, my friend could not uh, be himself. He has been fallen sick uh, from the very day the so-called prophet told him this. So please, the prophet should keep their prophecies to themselves. Thanks, mm -hmm. Al Fazari in Cape Coast. I, one of the things I want to say is that if they are false prophets, they are genuine prophets. If they are false prophets, they are genuine prophets. But it's very, uh, it's very important that believers learn the word. I personally tell people that by the grace of God, I operate in the gift of the Spirit. But I don't base my gift, my ministry on the gifts. In fact, in an ordinary day when you walk into my church, I'm teaching the word of God. I'm not calling people. I hardly do that. I hardly do that. But so people must know the word. If you don't know the word, you don't know, have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, you have not been able to grow in the things of God. You always be misled. Mm -hmm. And I think that people want quick fix. Because you see, the enemy will praise by fear. Now, the, gen the, the person who said the message. If you're told your father is going to die, I mean, that yeah, could be yeah, prophecy, fine. you yes. pray against it or something. It's a revelation. Mm -hmm. It's not even a prophecy. It's a revelation. It's a word of knowledge or maybe word of wisdom that is what is going to happen. So the purpose is to pray and avert it. It's to pray and avert it. So you go back to God in prayer that is what I've received from God. But God, I don't want my father to die now, whatever it is. And not only that, you follow up the medical things you need to do. But if at the end of the day, you leave a prophetic meeting with fear, then the purpose of the prophecy is not... But achieved. isn't the pastor's job to also say, put 5,000 no, aside? No, no, no. You see, that's why I'm saying that it must be done with decorum. Because the operation of the gift is given to you. But it must be done with decorum. Mm. I could still call out the person and say that, pray against death in your family. I know what it is. And take care of your father. Take care of your father, period. And I know genuine prophets who, never, who, say, who minister to people like that. Or even call the whole church, let's pray for this whole family. Because mm -hmm. obviously, we all know one day will die. And death can come to anybody. So when we pray, but when you try to single out and speak those things, at the end of the day, you put fear, you put panic into the person. And normally, the enemy operates on fear. But the Bible says he has not given the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of sound mind. So what, where do you get a sound mind? For the word. From the word. Because always when you are confronted with issues, you must have enough of the word in you mm. to reverse it. As a pastor, the enemy goes, oh, it, me, all of us go through that battle in the mind. Mm. Where the devil tells you it's not going to work, it's going to work. Mm. But you have to use the word. Alexander is in Takwade and sends a message, says, God bless you, Prophet. I'm enjoying all the scriptures you're bringing out. Uh, thank you for watching. You can also get in touch via WhatsApp on 0560 800,000. What happens when you do everything to ascertain the prophecy but does not happen? Uh, what, what do you do? I, I think you. that um, they, they, are, they are not timelines about prophecy, you continue praying about them. There mm -hmm. are things that God spoke to me years ago personally in my prayer time. I've had people confirm it to me. I've not seen them yet, but I'm still praying about them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
So there are things that have to do with destiny. And at a particular, a particular time, when you are ready, God gives it to you. There are things that I've seen myself, the things that I do. And there are some that even God overwhelms you that you thought it was very small, but you come into it and it's very big. So prophecy is for a period. You just continue praying. Mm. That's why every, every believer must have a, a consistent prayer life. When you receive prophecy, you don't go to bed. Begin to pray into the prophecy. If Mama B, God says that you are going to become a multimillionaire through what you are doing, Amen. you have to continue praying. <laughs> pray, who knows? Continue Maybe receiving some HBO, it. HBO HBO who come and pick you up for something. <laughs> so you continue praying. They happen. Mm. So you don't stop praying. One of the things we don't do very much is read. Yeah. And I'm happy about the fact that you have uh, quite a number of books yeah. for us to read. We'll go through it. But let me announce that you can join us via phone now, uh, seeing as this is a very, very important subject. If anything is bothering your mind uh, as to the subject we're discussing, kindly give us a call. 302 302-211-6912. Uh, also available on WhatsApp, 0560-800,000. This one says, please, I'd like to know the difference between prophecy and revelation. I turn on from Dabala. We've already discussed that, mm -hmm. but maybe Pastor will just quickly... Prophecy is an utterance gift. It's an utterance gift in the First Corinthians chapter 12. Revelation is either through word of knowledge, word of wisdom, or discerning your spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, then when you come to dreams and visions, you have dreams, we have visions, we have trances, we have open visions. So I can be sitting here and see something. Now, you can also just go off as if you're in a semi-sleep trance, just in a split second. Mm. Then you see something. Maybe you're just dozing off in a chair or something. Mm. And normally, those trances even download maybe a whole year's information to you. Then there's one that you go into this deep sleep where you sleep as a normal sleep, mm -hmm. but God speaks. And normally, when you, it's a genuine dream from God, you don't forget it. It's oh. itched on your mind. If it's a genuine, it's not the ones that you eat a lot of banku and sleep and, and uh, mm. you start seeing cockroaches chasing you. That's not <laughs> the, But if it's really from God, it, that thing is it's, it's em embedded, it's em embedded on your spirit. Mm. Never, there are dreams I've had which are encounters that from 1990 and beyond, I can remember them vividly and narrate them all. Okay. And so that, the, the, there's this issue of you dreaming and waking up from the dream and praying or saying things. Think so. We'll come to that, but let me speak to Frank. He's joining us from Jirapa. He's on the phone. Hello, Frank. Hello. Good morning Hello. to you. Yes, Frank, let's hear you. Good morning. I am, I'm very happy with this topic. Um, the issue these days is Christians are not learning the word. Yeah. And so anything goes. These days, we have had people who say they are prophets, they are that, that and they turn themselves into angels and they're able to appear in people's dreams and see them. Uh, I watched one on the television where the man said um, they were, he had a dream and the, uh, that man of God gave into his life and gave him money. When he woke up, the money was on his chest. And this is when you go to those churches, they are sharing money in the churches. And some of them, they said, sow seed. Five thousand Ghana city before the prophecy will come. Where well, from all these things? The Bible said that it was given free. And so free shall you also give up. So where well, from the monies and all that? And they are the richest people on, on our street this is the prophets. I think the, um, the churches council should come out and clear some of these people out. Mm. But they are really leading the people astray. And okay. at the end of the day, all these people following this false prophet will never inherit the kingdom of God. Thank you very all much. All right, Frank, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you... Let me, let me speak to somebody else who's joining us on the phone, and then we'll come. Uh, Aram or Aaron? Miriam, good morning. Hello. Hi, Miriam. Thanks for joining us. Let's hear you. Yeah, please, I want to ask the prophet about it. Now, he said that when you have a dream, it's from God. When you get you're like, when you get up and remember it, it's from God. Now, what about if you have a bad dream, like you see, you see yourself dead, is it from God? Do you remember the details of it when you're up? 
Yes. When you wake up, do you remember? Yes. Okay. All right. He'll, he'll try and answer that for you. Thank you very much, okay. Miriam. Thank okay. you. All right. Uh, can we box that up with the issue of sometimes you wake up and like you're... Fine. Whatever you're doing in the dream, you're you actually doing, doing it. it. These are spiritual um, encounters that happen. Sometimes you can be praying in a dream and wake up praying. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a dream that you have an accident or some whatever, you are dead, those things come because, you're, you see, your dream life is your soulish realm. Your dream life, your soulish realm. I don't want us to go deep into mm -hmm. that area today. But what happens is that whatever you see in your dream sometimes is what is happening in the flip side of your life. That's why when you have a dream that is negative, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Go open your Bible. Look for a way that can counter it. That the Bible says, I shall not die, but live to declare the glory mm. of God. The Bible said, I'm joined together in life. The Bible said, with long life will it satisfy me. The Bible said, that though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. The Bible said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord is my refuge. So this is the thing. If you don't have the word, how do you pray? How do you pray? And that's the problem people have because they have the dreams and they just say, but you must have the word. Like the, one of the callers said, we must go back to the word. And every genuine prophet bases his ministry on the word. Mm. Every genuine prophet must be a teacher or a preacher of the word. Let's speak to uh, George now. We'll come back on Miriam and then a bit of Frank. Hello, George. Good morning. Hi, George. Hello. Do I still have George holding? All right, let me speak to Philip now. Hello, Philip. Hello, Philip. Philip can't seem to hear me, but let's, mm. let's, uh, the bit about Miriam asking if it's a, a bad dream. Yeah, is like I God? said, if it's a bad dream, you must wake up and pray about it. You must pray about it. Mm. Just let me tell you something. This dawn, I had a dream. I in, a, in a dream, I had a dream about something, which I started praying about. You know what I'm saying? So it's not something that you sit down and just leave it that way. Whether it's going to happen or not, just pray, pray about it. Yes, because mostly what happens is that you see the event happen is like, I miss mm. this thing. I should have prayed about it. Yeah. And the purpose why God reveals those things to us is not to put fear, but to be able to pray about it. Okay. And sometimes you must have a Christian brother, a Christian sister who could stand with you. Mm. If you think it's too big, go see your pastor. And that's why the God gave the five-fold ministry for the edification of the body, for the building up of the work of the, mm. for the ministry. So, the pastor could stand with you and pray for you. Okay. So, it's not that um, uh, it's, it, it, God will reveal things to you, but you must be able to, All right. to handle it very well. Okay. Let's hear from Tony in Cape Coast. Hello, Tony. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Thanks for joining us. Let's hear you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Tony. We can hear you. Uh, actually, um, uh, um, yes, the program is quite interesting, okay? And, uh, yes, and uh, the, 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 the pastor there uh, is talking something about prophecy. <clears throat> actually, prophecy is good. That is why people normally rely, rely too much on it. Um, but you made mention, you asked him a question, that how can he... I mean, drive away those false prophets. And he made a very wonderful answer. That as for him, he has nothing to do with them. But you leave them to God himself to deal with them. And it's a very wonderful answer. Mm. Let, them, let him keep on doing that. I love that. All Amen. Right. Tony from Cape Coast, thank you very much uh, I, I, for I enjoying that. I believe that um, we have challenges that has to do with association. And I think that... Uh, like the, the Christian Council is there, the GPC, all those things. But mm. it's a, it's a, it's a, it, you have liberty to join. Yeah. That is why it's very important that as ministers of the gospel, you must have a covering. You must have a place that you are attached to. Mm. And this, I belong to an organization. I'm being controlled or not be controlled, but I'm being monitored or I'm being guided for that matter. So you don't do things out of the way. Yeah. But you see, these are people have the freedom of association and some people that's why if people are into the word and they know whatever it is and even are open-minded in the terms of this they don't like this is not the right place to be 
And that's what people must do. But yeah. as to controlling these people, we can because yeah. I mean God is the one who gives the gifts. It's true. And if the person gets up and says, I'm called. Mm -hmm. I mean, who are you? You, are called. you yeah. yourself, you have to tell people that you are called. <laughs> so Let, let's hear true. from Lawrence. Lawrence is in second D. Hello, Lawrence. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for holding. Let's hear you. I'm very grateful for the program you people are organizing. God richly blessed you and the man of God you have brought. Prophecy in our days has been misunderstood. These prophets are, are not actually training the children of God to have personal relationship with God. It's Christianity, we say, is being saved to have a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. This is what we see. People are saved, but yet they are not willing to have that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. They are ever ready to hear people talk about them and not God informing them. Sure. That is why people have become weak in studying the Bible. Yeah. Because until you have the word of God in you, what is the extent of prophecy? Because Jesus says in Hebrews 1 verses 1 and 2, that God in time past spoke to us. Through the prophet. But he has in these last days spoken to us by his way. Mm. All right, Lawrence, I, I'm sure we, we get your point. We've, we've got others holding on and some more messages. Uh, Alex Agnes is joining us. Uh, hello, Agnes. Good morning. Hello, Agnes. Yeah, good morning. Good I'm morning. Fine. Sure, My let's name see. Is I'm calling from Savova. Okay. Let's hear you, please. Okay, so we seem to have lost uh, Agnes, but let me pick some more messages. Before that, let mm. me ask uh, can you be asked to put money down for the revelation or the prophecy? There are different scenarios. I mean, um, I, I have gone to conferences where I speak in places that maybe it's not because of the revelation, mm. but the man of God is preaching on something about, about giving or sowing a seed or something. Okay. But it's not in connection with that. Okay. okay. Mm. Uh, and then I'll come to my personal one. <laughs> <laughs> this one says, uh, what happens when, okay, this is the when you do everything and the thing mm. doesn't come out. But what if the prophet gives a time frame and it does not happen? I think that um, one of the critical things is that um, well, that's why it, as, a, as a prophet, you must be very careful about timelines. And man, there's a book I read very early in my prophetic ministry, The Pitfalls of Prophetic Ministry by Bill Hammond, mm. where you must be careful how you deal with time, dates, and those things. Okay. But if the person has heard it clearly from God, that is, if it doesn't come to pass, that it, and, mm -hmm. and what the fact is that as anointed as they are, or anointed prophets are, they are also human beings, and they are errors that come up. So that one we must also have, it does not mean that it should be very rampant. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that every time, um, but the clear evidence of a true prophet is that whatever he says come to pass, maybe out of 10, mm -hmm. nine come to pass. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's hear from Matthew, who's joining us on the phone. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Yes, Matthew, let's hear you. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in the program, which is actually going on us just now. I love the way the, the, the prophet was actually presenting his message. I think whatever he's saying is actually on the line. Uh, more used to be able to continue in that direction. 
God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, this message, and I think that will be it for the phone calls. Uh, I want to spend time reading the messages so that we can wrap up beautifully. Good morning, Mama Vian, the prophet. Uh, please, as today's prophets, uh, the angels of our time, since some prophets call themselves the angels of our time. Silvanos Joe in Akachi sending us that message. Thanks, Mama V, for your great prophet. Uh, God bless you. Prosper in a sinful suit, sending us that message. Mm -hmm. Prophet, can one be, en uh, be gifted by engaging in much prayer, especially intercession for others? And can one be taught to become a prophet? Kojo in Takwa is asking. Yeah, the, the Bible even shows the school of the prophets. So you could be prophetic, but not, it's God who chooses the people. But to operate, and I believe that every believer must be prophetic. Because the, the, you see, the revelatory gift is part of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when it begins to become, it's, it's practiced and grown, then God puts you there. But it's, everybody should be at least prophetic. You must mm. be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You must be able to hear the voice of God. And my mom is like, as you may go to church and you want to give an offering of 10 cities, but inside you, you hear a voice say, give 20 cities. Yeah. Have you had that encounter? Yeah. That's the voice of the Holy <laughs> like Spirit. Like put all in it. <laughs> Aha, that's it. And if you are able to encourage that voice, it becomes, you are driving on the highway, say slow down. You hear yeah. that voice, yeah. slow down. I and hear just it, slow down. Yeah. Right in front of you, say an accident. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. And every believer must have that encounter because the Holy Spirit is not indwelling. That is why when a prophet is giving you prophecy, there is a witness, inner witness. There's an inner witness. And that's what we must all go back to. The word, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And no person, no, a man cannot be an angel. Now, in the Bible, in the Revelation, John wrote that to the angel, it's mostly depicting of, it is assumed that pastors are angels over houses, but it's a, a metaphoric language. But I cannot be here me transforming to an angel. Now, that was also not with understanding. People have seen me in their dream where they have been attacked as a pastor by demonic horse, and I show up there and I fight with them. Hmm. That has told me I'm their deliverer. But because God wants to show the, the role of a shepherd in, the, in case of how a, a shepherd goes to grace with the lamb, that when a, a, a fox, a, a bear, a lion comes, in my body, it's not doesn't make me a supernatural being. Hmm. I'm sometimes in order for you to identify well with the person, because maybe if God opens your eyes to see the angels around you, you start running helter skelter. But sometimes God just uses human beings, but that does not make the person an angel. An angel. And sure. no, man, I don't know how they do that. To go and bring money to somebody, I don't know how they do that. So I can't <laughs> talk about that. So at what points uh, can one become prophet? Because sometimes you hear somebody is like a pastor, or uh, you just know him. Uh, he's an evangelist and then suddenly he becomes a prophet. I think that it has to do a lot with, with God's calling. It's, it's, the Bible says that nobody takes this honor upon himself. Mm. So God calls you. And you see, we cannot question people's calling. Just, it's God who has called them. Let's okay. leave them to go. Somebody sending a related mm. message. It mm. says, good morning, Mama V. Looking good as usual. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, what stops the prophet from mentioning the names of the false ones around so uh, we can know and stay away oh. from them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. This one says, uh, good morning. My name is Robin K. Sedro, resident in Ho Nevolta region. I think we need to do more of the word of God. I think... Uh, like to hear people like to hear okay we are eager to hear prophecies at all cost from anybody who claims he is a man of God that is why we have all kinds of prophecies remember that the Bible says that in the last days people have itching ears yeah yes and we are in the last days so, mm. sort of, so but we've are, been in the last days for a while the last we? days began when Jesus ascended to okay. heaven he said I'll come back soon how yeah. soon is the soon that one is only God who knows. <laughs> even he himself said that nobody knows the time. Mm. It's only the Father who knows the time. I don't even know the time. Sure. This one says, please, what do you do when you are not seeing the manifestation of your prophecy for a long time? Enoch oh. in Benin is asking. I think that, like I gave the seven ways of judging prophecy, it must fall in line. Mm. 
Mm. So maybe I'll recommend my book to the person. Yeah, to okay. Uh, but we'll run through it. Yeah. Uh, this one says, good morning, please. I had an encounter with one prophet who told me the lady I'm dating loves me so much, but that is not the will of God for my life. Uh, and I'm very and I'm very confused. What do I do then as a Christian? I, I, I think the person should pray about it. In my own local church, mm. I tell people that I don't prophesy marriages. If you have found somebody you want to come, but what if you see something? I think you caution. You caution. But you know when two people say they are in love, when you caution, it doesn't so it doesn't sing. I don't put the my... message doesn't go down. Yes, that's it. So I tell my congregation <laughs> that me. When I this is I'll pretend as your person. I'll just tell you, I'll go, I'll take you to counseling. They are they are as a counselor, as mm. a marriage counselor, there are places that you begin to see signals. And sometimes when they come to show themselves to you and they do have some modalities to go through full forms, you could call one person aside and look, wait for a while. Can you give yourself another six months? Okay. And pray about it mm. so that you don't fall into the wrong thing. Sure. But I'll just tell you that pray about it. But the signals I'm seeing not to go. And there have been times they come back to me and say, Pastor, it was good. I didn't jump into this. Okay. I said, mm, all right. Uh, this one says over 95% of the Ghanaian prophets are false prophets. How do you know wow. that? Uh, a prophet <laughs> told my friend he was going to buy a car last year. And as we speak, common motorbike, the guy couldn't buy. This year, the same prophet told another friend he will also buy a car. Hmm, just waiting to see from Malik in Bali. And Malik says, please ask the prophet for me I dreamt three times of picking large amounts of gold mm. uh, in the same night what mm. could be the implication Malik from from uh, you ask yes yeah you're not doubting <laughs> <laughs> somebody's sky are doubting <laughs> I think that uh, man, that one it's gold casts many symbols gold is glory mm. gold means money so maybe if you want to go to gold business, but those are dreams. Maybe another yeah. time we'll talk about dreams and visions sure. because dreams and visions have its own. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Wallace in the Volta region says, "Mama, please ask the prophet how do I pray because that uh, that mean my problem. Okay, on how to pray when I start to thank God and that. Oh, okay, Wallace. I guess the import is how do you pray." How I think that um, the New Testament believer in, in, in Mark chapter 16 is supposed to pray in the spirit. Mm. So one of the reasons why we speak in tongues is to be able to pray according to the will of God. Mm. And speaking in tongues also helps you to, sp to pray longer. Sure. So people must also know that that is also a gift which mm. helps you in your devotional prayer life. Okay. Please, let's go through your books and then you tell us where we can find them. Okay. This is the first one. This is my wrote. first book. It's my favorite book. It's yeah. Prophetic Destiny. And uh, I was looking at the life of Saul, how Saul left his father's house to go look for donkeys. But little did he know that God was calling him as a king. Mm. And how Samuel the prophet played a role in his life. And that's how to do the, the, the prophetic. That's how to do the prophetic. And mm. I, I gave a lot of... Uh, um, uh, um, nuggets in there, and okay. I think it's my best book. Yeah, I mean, it's my best book. Okay, then this one has to do with battle with the word, okay. processing personal prophecy. These are messages that I've actually preached over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, it has to do with prophecy, how to handle prophecy, and how to uh, even judge a genuine prophet. Mm -hmm. It's all here. Okay. Then, um, okay, let me just. This one is open heavens. Yeah. Uh, my temple is called open heavens. And uh, how to walk under open heavens. I mean, the, what the, the things that you do to walk under open heavens. Mm. It's, a, it's a concept, it's a spiritual concept. Then we, this one is kingdom culture. This very one teaches a lot of how to be a believer, how to stay in the kingdom of God, okay. kingdom culture. So it talks about the culture, who um, a Christian, in, what you are supposed One of the things about the Christian in Acts chapter 242 is that uh, they continued in apostles' doctrine, in prayer, in fellowship, and in worship, so mm -hmm. you must be able to do that. Okay. Then, the, this are my latest, the power of the blessing. Mm -hmm. I trace the blessing from the life of Abraham to Christ, where we also get our blessing. Uh, Mama V, blessing is not the car, blessing is not the house, it's an anointing. It's and how favor. It's favor. <laughs> you want to get that? Yeah. that brings me to my book on the fragrance of favor. Yeah, I listened to you talk about this, this. one. Yes, and this one, it's a book that I began to ask questions of why is somebody favored more than the other? Yeah. And I began to stay there. And let's talk about it. So they can get them in the altar bookshop in Christ Temple. Mm. They can get them in um, uh, the Vision Bookshop in the Lighthouse 
Cathedral. Cathedral. Okay. Then they can get them in my local assembly, ICGC, Open Navis Temple, and okay. Dano. All right. Otherwise, you can contact Mikaela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mikaela Richter Anderson for more. Uh, Prophet mm. Eric Hechemoku, head mm. pastor, ICGC Open he Heavens Temple in Ajiringan. I'd like mm. to say thank you. God bless right. you for okay. writing, really. Okay, yes. God bless you for being here. Yes. The last thing I wanted to ask, hopefully I have the time to, mm. is can they ask you to buy uh, anointing oil and bring for it to be blessed or prayed over? Yeah, in some services, in order not for people to, people bring oil, I mean, like as an anointing service, mm. everybody brings oil, they lift it up, you pray. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not. Mm. Yes. Are you token? It's a token. Okay. And, uh, I acknowledge all the messages. I know that lots of you are still sending messages. I knew that would happen because this subject is yeah. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We'll find a way. Maybe Mikaela will give us a number that you can get through to the uh, uh, well, Pastor Eric well, well. I am not sure, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, stay with us when we come back. We jump into some big national issues here in our country today with my guest on AM Talk. You're watching the AM Show. Please do stay.